Thank you, Kirsty. Um, I like the timing of this next introduction following the presentation of UU Women's Federation. I'm very pleased to welcome to the platform and introduce to you a very special guest to this General Assembly, Rear Admiral Margaret Kibben. The 26th Chief of Navy Chaplains and the first woman to serve in this role. Chaplain, Chaplain Kibben will be presenting a workshop today at 1.15 on military ministry, free exercise and pluralism. So you might want to join her in uh, the Union Station Ballroom C. Unitarian Universalists have a lot to learn about interfaith ministry at its best from our military chaplains. And I thank Admiral Kibben and those who serve our nation in uniform. Our chaplaincy program under Reverend Sarah Lammert, Director of Ministries and Faith Development, is one that I'm very proud of and know you are as well. It's good to see our chaplains in uniform supporting the women and men who serve our country around the world. Thanks so much for being with us today. Before proceeding with our business this morning, um, I want to invite to the stage, and who made just a grand entrance here just a moment ago, our uh, attorney, Tom Bean. Um, he is a member of the Unitarian Society of Hartford. Uh, he's been our legal counsel and veteran of many general assemblies. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, he's a, a member of the First Unitarian Society at Newtown, Mass. I had wanted to introduce you to Justice Nina Elgo, She's a Superior Court judge in the state of Connecticut and a member of the Unitarian Society of Hartford. But she's been delayed with her plane arrival, so we expect her sometime this morning, and I will reintroduce you to her. So let me bring back Dr. Susan Geckler to report on the Congregational Study Action Issues, or CSAIs, as they are commonly known. Based on the results of the congregational poll that was done in February, the Commission on Social Witness submits the following issues from which delegates may select one for four years of study and action as a new Congregational Study Action Issue, or CSAI. You can see when the CSW alerts that was handed out this morning, the summary and the criteria for selecting a CSAI. The text of the CSAIs is found in your program books on pages 93 to 96. The issues that you will have a choice among are CSAI 1, which is climate change and environmental justice. Robert Murray will, is the proposer for that one. A National Conversation on Race, Deborah Greenwood is the proposer on that one. Ending Gun Violence in America, Mac Geckler is the proposer on that one. And The Corruption of Our Democracy, Kendra Munson is the proposer on that one. And Moderator Key will explain the process we'll go through. So now we're at that point in our agenda <clears throat> where we'll take action to decide on which of the four proposed congregational study action issues will appear in the final agenda tomorrow. So this is your cue to reach towards things like your voting cards and the program so you can follow along with us this morning. We're not going to vote for a while, but you need to have access to it. See bylaw section 412, Statements of Conscience, for a complete outline of the process. And I certainly hope you went to the many assemblies to weigh in on these. This is the first step in a process that will ultimately produce a Unitarian Universalist Association Statement of Conscience that emerges from one of these four CSAIs. You've heard the report on the four CSAIs under consideration. It is noted on page 11 of the Rules for Procedure 
The sponsor of each issue will have two minutes to speak in favor of the issue. The first proposed congregational study action issues eligible for referral to member congregations is found on page 93 of the program book and is entitled Climate Change and Environmental Justice. So will the chair of the Commission of Social Witness please introduce the sponsor? Well, she's not up here, so I will. Um, so the uh, sponsor of that is Robert Murphy. Uh, the, is he at the, uh, there he is. So the chair recognizes the delegate at the microphone one. Good morning, delegates. I am Bob Murphy from Tarpon Springs, Florida, Gulf Coast of Florida. We're concerned about climate change, but first of all, we're concerned about environmental justice, because we don't want to solve environmental problems at the expense of people who already suffer in the energy economy. We're concerned about Native Americans, African Americans, Latinos, others who've already been victimized. We want to form new partnerships. We want to reach out of our silos. We want to try something new to build this environmental justice movement. And that means taking some risks, thinking about environmental issues in new ways. Because of this desire to work for new partnerships and to do things in new ways, I'm going to try something it's very unusual. I'm going to ask that you not vote for this issue. I'm going to withdraw my support. I'm going to ask that you support the call for discussion about racial justice. Okay. Now, environmentalists especially, if you're concerned about environmental justice, support the racial justice discussion. And next year, come down to New Orleans and join me, and we'll have a discussion about racial justice, and we'll build that environmental justice movement. So you all come to New Orleans, and I'll take you out for a good cup of coffee. Thank you. Thank you. The second proposed congregational study action issue eligible for referral to member congregations is found on page 94 of the final agenda, and it's entitled A National Conversation on Race. Will the chair, uh, will um, uh, I recognize the uh, Deborah, I can't read the name, uh, Rosie Deborah Greenwood at microphone two. Thank you, Reverend Bob. <laughs> we must fight for racial reconciliation. Racial reconciliation occurs when we humans realize that we are more alike than different and that our common self-interests are more aligned than we have been led to believe. With racial reconciliation, we can overcome the superficial barriers that have diminished our power around all the issues we care about, climate change, gun control, Citizens United, mass incarceration, and more. We have common self-interests. If you are thinking, but we've already done our anti-racism work with our support of the Black Lives Matter movement, then you are exactly the person this CSAI is for. <laughs> you think you know our issues, but you haven't allowed others to help you with yours. Remember that arrogance Reverend Sinkford mentioned last night? What would our faith community be if it were more inclusive? Who might you be if you are in such a community? This conversation is designed to bring like and unlike people together, both within and without our congregations, 
In order to change the world, we need allies, we need partners. And we need to begin the process of developing those relationships. I'll leave you with a quote from Nelson Mandela, who makes the ask for your support far better than I. We understand that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. Thank you very much. Thank you. The third proposed congregational study action issue eligible for referral to member congregations is found on page 95 of your program book and entitled Ending Gun Violence in America. I recognize Mac Guckler at microphone three. I'm a delegate from Davies Memorial U Church in Camp Springs, Maryland. I want to thank those off-site delegates for their input and also the input we got from the Mini Assembly. It was very helpful. 33,000 33, gun deaths a year. One third of those are homicide, murders. There are a few that are supposedly accidental, but they're not really accidental. Two-thirds, 22,000 suicides a year, 22,000. I've lost five friends and colleagues to suicide. The commonalities are none were elderly, none had terminal disease, all had handguns, and that's how they went. We need to do something about that. In your CSW alert, you will notice that on the list of all the CSAIs we've done and SOCs, gun violence does not appear. It is time we take this issue on. There's much we can do. We need to listen. We need to learn. We need to get behind and support programs that are working. Domestic violence issues, suicide intervention. We need to keep guns away from those people who shall not have guns. Thank you. Thank you. The fourth proposed Congregational Study Action issue eligible for referral to congregations and is um, on page 96 of your program book. And I recognize Kendra Munson at the uh, microphone four. Good morning. My name is Kendra Munz. I'm from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Venice, Florida, and our Florida Statewide Action Network, UU Justice Florida. Our fifth principle calls us to champion democracy. Now we must address the corruption that underlies all issues. We will never solve gun violence, racism, and climate change until we get the big money out of control of government. How long must we suffer mass murders like the one in Orlando while Congress is enthralled to the NRA? How long will legislators deny climate change because they are funded by the fossil fuel industry? How long will our bloated campaign finance system consume outrageous sums of money while workers fight for 15, women fight for control of their own bodies, and LGBTQ folks fight for their basic human rights? Enough! Let's explore all ways to fix our broken system of government. Yes, we must address mass incarceration, white supremacy, voting rights, gerrymandering, and public financing of campaigns. We need a moral political revolution, a fusion coalition to work together for respect and dignity for all. Thank you, Reverend Barber, for leading us forward together, not one step back. And yes, to get big money and hate messaging out, we must do more than overturn Citizens United. We must go to the root of problems and eliminate corporate constitutional rights and money as speech. The Constitution was for we the people, not we the corporations. Let's work together to restore that promise. 
22 UU congregations in Florida have passed a resolution for the 28th Amendment. Yours can too. 700 resolutions and ballot initiatives have passed in cities and counties all over the country. New York just became the 17th state to pass a resolution. Washington state votes in November. California may be next. Will you join this critical effort? Let's explore all avenues for fixing our broken system. Let's start with voting at all levels. And yes, amend the Constitution if needed. Please vote for CSA proposal number four, the corruption of our democracy. Let's stop the madness. Let's solve this for all our issues. Thank you. Thank you. So you have heard from the sponsors of the four proposed CSAIs, and now we have time for up to four additional statements of support for each of the issues. I have been advised that we have no one off-site that wants to speak to the issues, so let me suggest a way we're going to do this. Uh, CSA 1 has essentially uh, deferred, if you will, so we will be hearing first from microphone 2 a national discussion on race. And we're going to do them all through the, and then the second group, and then the third group. So I recognize the delegate at microphone number two. Good morning. I'm Ed Edelson from the Mattoctuck Unitarian Universalist Society of Woodbury, Connecticut. Why do we need a conversation on race now? Many of us had hoped that the election of Barack Obama almost eight years ago would lead to a more mature awareness of race in the United States. We heard words like a post-racial society. Instead, with cruel irony, we found ourselves in an era of heightened racism. Elected leaders at the highest levels vowed to do all they could do to stop any initiative of the new president and work for his failure. That's outrageous. This is not typical partisan rhetoric, but the words supported by many of racial hatred. It did not take long for it to lead to the fear, hatred, violence, and mass incarceration. President Obama chose to focus on getting his work done by ignoring the issue of race in order that he could keep the nation uh, to address the great economic recession he inherited or the de and to focus on the decades-long struggle to address the 40 million people without health insurance or forging worldwide agreements on climate change. But it was at the cost of postponing the important conversation on race that this country needed to continue and now needs more than ever if we're going to be able to continue to bend the arc of history towards justice. That is why I speak in favor of this CSAI, so that UUA delegates can show our support for addressing the heightened racism that is not only immoral, but undermines our nation and its role in the world. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize the delegate at microphone two. Good morning. My name is Joanne Weiss, and I'm with the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Gwinnett in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Perhaps for some people, the first impression of the CSAI is, the, is that we are already doing the work on racial justice. Our congregations have displayed banners, read books, attended protests, and lit up Facebook with comments. We feel that we are moving forward. The missing piece, however, is listening to each other and having difficult conversations so that we may truly know each other as we have so much to learn from one another. We must work towards transformative change and true reconciliation. This is the goal of this CSAI. Last year, we voted to support Black Lives Matter through, an act, or through our act of immediate wit, of, action of immediate witness. This CSAI is a deepening of that support. A national conversation on race is the foundation of how we continue to engage in our work on racial justice. In addition, I support this CSAI, CSAI because I like the practicality of the local focus. It engages us within our congregation and encourages us to meet with our neighboring faith communities in a way that we listen and learn from, another, from one another so that we can create a more compassionate world. I ask you to vote for a national conversation on race. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize the delegate at microphone number two.
Good morning. I'm Jack UC Williams from the First Unitarian Universalist Society of Albany, New York. Last night, for those of us who attended the Service of the Living Tradition, Reverend Singford talked about the Service of the Living Tradition in 1966 and the Ware Lecture speaker, who was Dr. Martin Luther King. At that time, the UA was asked not to sleep through the revolution and was given all kinds of reasons and was given some step-by-step -step things that could have been done. Reverend Sinkford reminded us, those of us of a certain age, and for those who were born later, about the assembly and association excitement, interest, and support of those steps, and what could have been done that later was talked about as the journey toward wholeness. In the last few years, we've been celebrating a number of 50th anniversaries. We've talked about merger of the UUA. We've talked about civil rights bills. We've talked about events like the March to Selma, and even what most refer to as the Black Walkout. To reconcile truths, plural, must be told. An uncomfortable and inconvenient truth regarding race is that this, in this nation is that we have again reached a crisis moment in time. When change must happen, people considered different or other have been dying or injured with impunity. As much as we Unitarian Universalists may believe that we do affect the entire world, what we believe and how we feel, in fact, in the 60s, 80s, 90s, and even in this century, is not new, as you've heard. However, it is essential. Reverend Sinkford did say we failed, and I repeat, Many of the resolutions, AIWs, and previous CSAIs have included race. However, the work is not done. Reverend Barber talks about it being a moral movement and being part of a fusion movement. All of us have race. We need a better... <laughs> I recognize the delegate at microphone number two. Good morning. I'm Connie Cole Ingber from Mattituck Unitarian Universal Society in Woodbury, Connecticut. So talking about what are the signs that this conversation on race is a CSII for right now, Dr. Deborah Greenwood's passion and eloquence brought our attention to this need for a very necessary conversation on race. We as a faith are at a tipping point. Yesterday, we were electrified by the words of Reverend William Barker, then further inspired by Reverend Singford. I cannot count how many times yesterday, in this room and in others, we were on our feet, driven there by the truth being told, by the truth we each heard and felt in our bones and hearts. This conversation is already begun, and we as Unitarian Universalists can only benefit from taking up this conversation on race, congregational study action issue. The message of this General Assembly thus far has been, the time has come for each of us to galvanize our congregations, to put our shoulder to the wheel and bend that arc toward justice, remembering that we are stronger together, that refusing to be divided by race is key to success in this battle for racial justice, building bridges instead of walls will deliver us to the goal that seems impossible at times, freedom and equality for all. Voting for this CSAI, for this conversation on race, could be the key to our movement forward. We who have been awoken can share the power and determination we have found here at General Assembly with others at home, and this CSAI will give us the tools to do just that. I remind you of the blessing we shared with one another yesterday. I put my hand in yours so that we may do together what I cannot do alone. Thank you. And now we turn to microphone three, where proponents of the uh, ending gun violence in America, and I recognize the delegate at microphone number three. Good morning. My name is Morgan Johnstone from Arlington Street Church in Boston. I was born and raised in Louisiana, and in Louisiana and the South in general, guns and gun laws and the NRA are rampant. There's no protection. The crisis and the horrible thing that happened in Orlando, Florida just a few days ago scared me. It scared me so I didn't want to run out, leave my house. I didn't want to hold my partner's hand in public. 
I am scared for my brothers and sisters in the LGBT community in the South. We have no protection. What happened in Orlando could happen again unless we do something about it. I urge the congregation, I urge the delegates to vote for this CSAI. And if we do this, I think we can make a change in not only the UUA, but in the country and world as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. I recognize the second of four delegates to be speaking at microphone three. I recognize the delegate at microphone three. I am Eleanor Halper, delegate from the Oberlin, Ohio UU Fellowship. And, uh, at the 2004 Long Beach uh, GA, I led the effort to pass an AIW seeking to renew the then ban on assault weapons. The AIW passed GA unanimously but Congress did not renew the ban. Assault weapons now are the most used weapons in mass shootings. I became active in seeking sensible gun laws after May 9, 2003. Why? On that day, a disgruntled graduate from Case Western Reserve University forced his way into a building, shot discriminately using an assault weapon and a pistol. He killed one student, wounded another, and wounded a professor while 92 terrified students, faculty, and staff desperately tried to find places to hide. That professor was my daughter, is my daughter. She heard the gunshots, returned to her office, turned and saw the gunman six feet away. She slammed her office door closed just as he shot what would otherwise have been a lethal bullet through the door. She realized she could be seen uh, through the translucent glass, so, so she hid in the closet for the next four hours, standing the whole time. Before the gunman was caught, a SWAT team rescued her, let her out of the building, covered her escape with raised rifles, shown in a widely published dramatic photo of a terrified woman, my daughter. Her chest wound was not serious. The bullet hit her sternum and bounced off. But what if it had been a half an inch to one side? Her PTSD lasted five years despite skilled counseling and her husband's support. She managed her teaching load, but her research suffered greatly. But no one remembers this 13 years ago, only one death. But those, those present that day remember, and their families and friends. I call on all you use. Thank you. I recognize the uh, third delegate at microphone three to speak on gun violence. Good morning. My name is Eric Svensson from First Parish Unitarian Universalist in Lexington. I'm here with- A little closer to the mic. Let, let's start the clock over again. Oh, it hasn't started yet. Good. Um, I am Eric Svensson. I am with First Parish Unitarian Universalist in Lexington, Massachusetts. I'm here with my son who co-wrote this statement. Gun violence in America is a problem of, ep of epidemic proportions. 33,000 gun deaths every year, 90 every day. Gun possession is no longer a constitutional matter for Congress, it's a matter for our society. When black people are 10 times more likely to be killed by guns than white people, this is an issue of race and equality. When Americans are 25 times more likely to be murdered with a gun than in any other developed country, this is an issue for our culture. When 50% of suicides are committed with handguns, this is a public health issue. Race, suicide, domestic violence, and poverty are intrinsically connected to gun violence, and we can no longer ignore how it has affected our communities, nor can we wait for our national government to solve the problem. The NRA would have us believe the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, when the truth is very different. Less than 1% of violent crime is prevented with a gun. Gun possession is not providing personal safety. In fact, it is very much the opposite. Gun owners are four and a half times more likely to be shot by a gun. The clear difference in our perception and the reality shows that our country needs to seriously examine the role that guns play in providing security. If our goal is truly a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all, we need to focus on a free and responsible search for that truth and meaning within this issue. 
We have an opportunity and an imperative as Unitarian Universalists to begin that examination and dialogue within our communities and our congregations. We can break this cycle of guns leading to violence, leading to more guns, and shape the narrative from one of fear to one of healing from the scars left on the fabric of our society. We urge you to support this CSAI. Thank you. I recognize the last delegate at microphone three to speak on gun violence. Good morning. I'm Lee Meyer from First Unitarian Church, Cincinnati, and I am here to support the proposed CSAI on gun violence. Understand, if our current rate of genocide continues, most of the other issues we're concerned about won't really matter. We live in the most violence-afflicted peacetime society in the world. Comparative statistics from a number of sources reveal a disproportionate level of deaths from gunshots in the USA. A report last week in USA Today showed a level of gun-related fatalities here that is 160% higher than that in the UK, a much more densely populated country. A Wikipedia report shows U.S. deaths from gunshots at 105 per million population, compared with less than 9 per million in Australia and 2 per million in the U.K. If you are black, you are 10 times more likely than a white to die from guns in the United States. We know the rate of incidence of mass shootings is accelerating in this country, Recent police shootings from Ferguson to Chicago and all around Ohio have urbanites and suburbanites, especially people of color, living in fear of the very public servants who are supposed to protect them. Many, many of us believe that our gun culture has not made us safer. It has made us more vulnerable. But now, with attention drawn to the escalation of gun-related events, the time for us to support serious study of the proliferation of deadly weapons in our society and the cultural and political inertia that sustains it is here. If Donald Trump is wrong when he states that we will be safer when all good Americans own their own assault rifles to defend themselves, then we need to be compiling the evidence to support our position. This is the time to Thank work on Thank you very on. much. And the um, four delegates uh, speaking for CSI 4 on corruption of our democracy, I recognize the delegate at the microphone. Thanks. My name is Jasper Davidoff, and I'm a member of the Church of the Larger Fellowship from Evanston, Illinois. <laughs> okay, I didn't start yet. Okay. As a, youth, <laughs> as a youth, I want to imagine that I know what youths are interested in. So I think that as a congregational study, the corruption of our democracy gives us a special opportunity right now to engage more people in our congregations. It's being proposed during a year in which I've watched my friends and fellow teens get more interested in politics and policy than I've ever noticed before. We're turning out in droves to support candidates who are actually making an effort to speak to us. We're volunteering for them. We want a stake in our country. We want a national voice more than ever before. And we've been expressing discontent this year as well. My friends in college at the University of Wisconsin, for example, are infuriated that their state-issued photo IDs won't permit them to vote. Many of us have been displeased with the system that with powerful corporate funding, superdelegates, and closed party registration periods, seems like it's trying to silence our voices. And when our elected officials and representatives insult the refugees that we've befriended at school, or refuse to deal with the gun epidemic that caused the empty seat at my high school's graduation this year. We want to imagine that our votes and our organizing efforts can make a difference. Just this year, 400 of us UUs joined 1,400 people arrested this year in DC for Democracy Spring and Democracy Awakening. There's something going on. So let's talk about voting rights, special interests in gerrymandering, because we have opinions too. We want to improve the system so we can feel like our passion translates to actual change. If our, corporations, uh, if our congregations begin to have conversations about how to rebuild our democracy, we'll join in, and having more youth in the conversation is always a better thing. So please, let, vote to let us by supporting CSAI number four, 
the corruption of our democracy. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. I spot a proud grandmother out there. <laughs> Just saying. I recognize the delegate at the microphone. Thank you. I am Gladys Sanchez. I represent Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of DeKalb in DeKalb, Illinois. To, to my fr proud African-American seven-year-old son, I am a strong Filipino woman who serves as both his mother and father. To many rich middle-class white guys with Fortune 500 companies, I am identified as an illegal alien, low-income, single mother that should not complain and accept cheap labor or de be deported back to the country I left at the age of seven. To my close UU friends in this room, I am a college graduate, balancing three jobs and serving as a director of religious educator at my home church. The democracy I envision should simply identify me as a taxpayer human being. How is it that even with a college degree, I still have to juggle three jobs and still live at the poverty rate? Is it democracy to put me in a category in which I run the risk of going back to my country I left at seven or be treated as a second-class citizen? Is it fair, equal, or just to have a single minority mother like myself make 79 cents for every dollar earned by men when I am the head of the household? My dear friends, in order for us to work together towards a dem democratic society, we must reframe, recreate, and revitalize our definition of a fair, just, democratic society. This is the time to invest in restoring our democracy so we can truly serve our people. Our goal in moving forward supports grassroots organization movements as they organi organically form from the bottom up. The corruption of our democracy is the meta issue that needs to be dealt with first. It is directly connected to two of our UU principles, which is first, to, direct, to respect the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and fifth, which is the right of conscience and use of the democratic process. With Thank you very much. I recognize the delegate at microphone four. Good morning. My name is Alan Lindrup. I'm a delegate from the First Unitarian Society of Chicago. In line with our fifth principle, I urge you to vote for proposal uh, Congressional Study Action Issue number four, is that it has multiple aspects worthy of study and action. That's why a four-year process is needed. Plus, it is timely in that progress on many of the issues will be affected uh, by how much, we can, how much we can accomplish on other issues is affected by how much we can progress on this. Studying and acting to move our country toward a constitutional amendment to overturn the Supreme Court's Citizen United decision versus advancing a court challenge before a Supreme Court with a new makeup is one of the focuses. Studying and acting to move our home states away from procedures that create gerrymandered and non-competitive congressional and state legislative districts is another. Fighting measures that try to restrict who can vote and working to make our, making accessible voting for as many citizens as possible is yet another. Join us in voting to help restore the democracy that is the foundation of people power. Vote for CSA I number four, the corruption of our democracy. Thank you. I recognize the delegate at microphone four. Thank you. I'm Reverend Dr. Michelle Walsh, and I'm an affiliate community minister with and a delegate for the United First Parish Church in Quincy, Massachusetts. I am passionate about addressing climate change, racial justice, and gun violence in this country and our larger world. As an urban community minister, I have seen far too many black children I have loved and helped to raise die from gun violence, including my African-American goddaughter's nephew, Kenny Hall. 
As a queer, bi-affectional person, person, I feel heavily the traumatic impact of the most recent mass shooting in Orlando on the LGBTQ communities. I also fear for the impact of climate change on current and future generations, such as my nieces, nephews, and goddaughter and god-grandchild in the coming decades, as well as the impact and burden already being carried by the most oppressed and marginalized communities as they experience droughts, hurricanes, tsunamis, and rising sea levels with all of the negative political consequences in the aftermath. This is why I have chosen to speak on behalf of studying for the next four years our corrupted democratic process and how we can empower ourselves to make this process equitable and just for all persons. I desperately want and need each person to have a voice and capacity for action in this country because each of these issues and so many more are needed to create the more beloved and flourishing world we dream about. Issues that include severe economic and educational inequality, mass incarceration, xenophobia, inadequate health and mental health care. The intersection of all of these issues requires a moral fusion of communities of resistance to increase our capacity for action. It requires us to deepen into understanding how we have progressively lost our democracy to oligarchy in this country. It requires us to study how we can regain our democracy by changing the system. It requires us to act. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you have heard the delegates speaking in support of these four CSAIs to which one to bring to the final agenda. Now it's time to vote. Now let me explain the voting card each delegate should have by now. It will be used to vote for a CSEI today and an AIW tomorrow. So you've got two voting activities on that one card. And I want you to use only the bottom stub and enter a number that represents the CSAI you wish to support. It's pretty clear, but let me state it more so. If you wish to vote for CSAI 1, despite the magnanimity of the, the proposer, you may still vote for CSEI 1 on um, climate change and environmental justice. Write a 1 in the box. If you want to support 2, a national conversation on race, write 2 in the box. If you want to support three, ending gun violence in America, write three in the box. I think you're getting it now. And if you want to support four, corruption of our democracy, write four in the box. Then detach it from your voting card and pass it to the tellers, which are standing by. And again, you can recognize them by those great vests they wear. These ballots will be counted while we do the rest of our business. And if one does not have a plurality, we will have a, a runoff uh, when we know the results. Now, occasionally, someone will vote for more than one, and they write two numbers in there. If you write more than one number, or number five, or higher, your ballot will not be counted. You only get to vote for one. I know they all have merit, and they really do all have merit, but you only get to vote for one. So now the tellers will collect and count the ballots, and we'll announce the results by the end of this general session. We good? I think it's time to sing, don't you? And um, I'm looking who our music leader is this morning. <laughs> 